Let's do the second one a little bit quicker here. So this one we have FES, which is a solid reacting with um, HCl, which is aqueous. And it says hydrogen sulfide gas is formed. All right, so there's gonna be double replacement. The S and the CL are gonna switch or the Fe and uh, the H are gonna switch. So we'll have H2S as one product because it says so in um, in the uh, directions here, okay, right here. And then we'll have Fe bonded with chlorine. Now, again, it might be hard for you to tell, but this is iron two sulfide, okay? This is iron with a two plus charge bonded with sulfur, which is two minus. That's why there's no subscripts here because they balance each other out. So when the iron bonds with the chlorine, we're gonna have a chemical formula of FeCl2. And the reason again for that is because the iron ion is gonna be two plus and the chlorine is going to be Cl minus one. We'll need two of them to balance out the one iron. That's why there's a two as a subscript there, okay? So we need to check to see if either of these is a solid. Now it does tell us one of them is a gas. So let's see, let's see if the other one's a solid. It might not be. And if not, we'll explain uh, in a second why that's okay. So this is iron two chloride. So again, let's go look on the back of the periodic table at our solubility table for iron two chloride. So iron two is here and chloride is here. And this says aqueous. All right, so that one is not a solid. Now, we might typically think, uh-oh, that's not good. One of these needs to be a solid. Actually, it doesn't necessarily matter if one, if you make a solid or not. What matters is whether you make something that is not aqueous, okay? So in this case, um, we are making something that is a gas. That's not aqueous, so it's fine, okay? Um, so we kind of lied before when we said that one of these has to be a solid. Actually, just one of them has to be something that's not aqueous. They just, they just both can't be aqueous. If they're both aqueous, no reaction is going to happen. It's okay to form a gas though. Okay, that, that counts too. So, all right, last thing we have to do here is balance. Um, and I believe to balance it, we just need to put a two in front of the HCl, which balances out the hydrogens and the chlorines, the sulfur and the irons already balanced. All right, last one here we're going to look at is combustion reactions. In these reactions, you're going to be taking an element or a compound reacting with oxygen to uh, produce energy in the form of heat and light. Um, these ones have a very specific looking chemical formula, okay? So typically, uh, and I guess in the picture here, they have CH4 reacting with O2 and they're making CO2 and H2O, okay? Combustion reactions usually always start with a hydrocarbon. A hydrocarbon is a carbon molecule that has hydrogen in it, okay, hydrocarbon, or a carbohydrate. And a carbohydrate is a compound that has carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in it. And hydrogen and oxygen make water, so it's it's been hydrated, okay? But you're always gonna start with either a hydrocarbon or a carbohydrate. You're gonna react it with oxygen as O2, and you're always gonna make CO2 and H2O. Okay, that is like textbook combustion. That's what all combustion reactions look like. So let's take a look at two examples here. Um, we're gonna write out the complete reaction equations for burning benzene and ethanol. And they give us the chemical formulas for both of these. All right, so these are both going to be combustion reactions because we're burning things. And that's what combustion is, is when you burn something. We have benzene, which is C6. H6, and I guess it's a liquid. And since it's combustion, we are reacting it with oxygen. Okay, we know that because as most of you know, in order to light something on fire, you need oxygen, right? And so since it's combustion, we're always gonna make the same products, which is CO2 gas and H2O gas, okay? And the H2O is gonna be a gas because it's gonna be hot. So when it's formed, it's gonna be a vapor, right? So it'll be a gas, it'll be hot. Um, it won't be a liquid, okay? So these ones are very easy to write out. The tricky part with these ones is actually balancing. When you balance these ones, um, the oxygens can be very challenging to balance sometimes because you'll notice that on the product side, oxygen is found in two different locations. On the reactant side, it's only found in one place. 
So I would recommend that when you're balancing these, you balance out the other elements first and you leave oxygen for last, okay? So if you balance everything else out, the oxygen will oftentimes just kind of balance itself. So we have six carbons on the left. We only have one carbon on the right. We have six hydrogens on the left. We only have two hydrogens on the right. And on the left, we have two oxygens. And on the right, we have two oxygens here and one oxygen there. That gives us a total of three, okay? So again, we're gonna balance the oxygens last. Let's balance the carbons and the hydrogens first. So in order to balance out the carbons on the product side, we need to have six of them. So we're gonna write a six there. That'll give us six carbons, okay? That'll change the number of oxygens as well, but we're gonna count those later. So right now we're just gonna ignore them. So that balances the carbons. Let's go balance the, the hydrogens next. Uh, we have six on the reactant side. We only have two on the product side. We're gonna need to put a three there. Turn this into a six, okay? Then from here, we have to balance out our oxygens. So on the reactant side, nothing changed, but on the product side, we have six times two. So that's 12 oxygens plus three times one is three. So 12 oxygens here plus three oxygens there, that gives us a total of 15 oxygens, okay? On the reactant side, you only have two. So how do we balance this? Now, here's gonna be a little trick just to help you. We could multiply seven and a half by two that will get us 15, right? Seven and a half times two, that's 15. Now you might be looking at that though and going, well, wait, what? I thought we couldn't have half numbers, right? You can't have seven and a half oxygens. How does that work? It's gotta be a whole number. You're right. But if we do this, it makes it very easy then to, to solve. So how we're gonna get rid of this half while still keeping everything else balances, we're just gonna double everything, okay? So we're just gonna double all the coefficients and then everything will be whole numbers and all of the numbers will still be balanced out properly. So this was originally a one, so that becomes a two. That means instead of six carbons, we have 12 carbons. Instead of six hydrogens, we have 12 hydrogens, okay? The, uh, the seven and a half oxygens, doubling that, that becomes 15. So this now gives us 30 oxygens on the reactant side. On the product side, again, we're still doubling, so this used to be six, now it's gonna be 12. So that gives us, 12 carbons, okay, we'll count the oxygens last, so we'll count those in a second. The three here, that's gonna double to become a six. So now six times two, that gives us 12 hydrogens. And as for the total number of oxygens, we have 12 times two, that's 24, plus six times one, that's six. 24 plus six gives us 30, okay? So our balanced chemical equation for this combustion reaction is gonna look like this. 2, 15, 12, 6. And if you look at all those numbers, there's no common denominator that you can divide out from all of them. So that is the simplest form that we can make it. All right, taking a look then at letter B. Um, it's going to basically look very similar. So we have ethanol. So CH, and it's a very long molecule, but CH3, CH2OH um, liquid. That's going to be reacting with O2, uh, and I guess I forgot physical states for the oxygen on the previous one, but that's a gas. So most of you know that oxygen is a gas that floats around in the air. And uh, the, the products we're making are the same exact products as before. We have CO2, which is a gas, plus H2O, which will be a gas. And then from here, we just have to balance it, okay? So again, let's take a count to do some balancing. Carbons, we have one, two. Okay, so you gotta count them in multiple places. We have two carbons. Hydrogens, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And oxygens, we have one here and two there. That's a total of three. On the uh, product side, number of carbons we have is one. Number of hydrogens we have is two. And number of oxygens we have is three. Okay, so we have two here. Uh, we have two there and one there. So that's three oxygens. All right, so let's again, just bounce out the carbons and the hydrogens and hopefully the oxygen will balance themselves. So carbon, we have two on the left. We only have one on the right. We're gonna need to put a two there. That'll give us two carbons. Again, that's gonna change our number of oxygens here, but we'll count that later. Um, let's go to hydrogen next. On the right side, we have two. On the left side, we have six. 
So we need to put a three there. Okay, that will give us a total of um, six hydrogens. So that bounces that. And the last thing now is to count oxygens. So we have two times two, that's four, plus three times one, that's seven. Four plus three is seven. We have seven oxygens. All right, um, so again, we can't really multiply anything to get to seven, that's a whole number. So we might need to do our, our half trick again, but we might not. So let's take a look. We have three oxygens total on this left side. One of them is in this compound. The other one is in this compound. Now, if we, if we decide to put a number in front of this, that's gonna change all, all of the numbers so far we've already done because this compound has carbon and hydrogen in it. So if we put a number in front of this, we're gonna have to change this coefficient and we're gonna have to change this coefficient because that's on both. And we need to get a total of seven oxygens. Well, we have two here and one here. If we put a number in front of this here, it's only gonna change the number for the oxygens. It won't mess up with the carbons or the hydrogens. So this is two, this is two, and we need to have plus one. This needs to equal seven, okay? So right now we have two, but let's think of it as two X, right? Because we're gonna put a number here. We're gonna put an X, we're gonna put a number there. So what can we multiply this by, this two by, to get a number that plus one will become seven? Hopefully you figured it out, but it should be three, okay? So two times three gives us six, plus one is seven. So if we put a three there, that'll give us six auctions here, plus the one there, that gives us a total of seven, that balances out with the seven auctions that we have on the right, and at this point, everything is balanced, and here is our final balance chem uh, chemical equation for this combustion reaction, okay? All right, so that one again was a little bit tricky. All right, so um, the last thing here is predicting products of chemical reactions. So the reason why we learn about these reactions is because once we know what each one looks like, we can use them to predict what will happen in a chemical reaction before it even takes place. So the number of elements you have, the number of compounds you're reacting with are a good indicator of reaction type and therefore possible products. And at the end here, they have these little general equations for each of the reactions, okay? So um, I would take a look at each of these and they use R and S, but I like to use A, B, C, and D. So here's, uh, here's what each one looks like, okay? So combination reaction, we have basically uh, we have basically A, A plus B makes AB, okay? Or R plus S makes RS. That's the general equation for, for uh, combination. For decomposition, it's basically the exact opposite. So for this one, it's going to be AB breaks apart into A plus B, okay? That's our general equation. Again, they have it here with R and S. Um, a single replacement, it's typically going to look like this where you have A plus BC goes to B plus AC. Okay, so A is replacing B. So that B is now by itself and A is bonded with C. Okay, that's typical general formula for single replacement. And then for double replacement, um, we have a general formula that's gonna look something like this. So we have AB plus CD, and A and C are gonna swap. So A is gonna be bonded with D in the products, and C will be bonded with B. Okay, that's our general formula for um, double, double replacement reactions. And then as for, um, as for combustion, this looks really complicated, but basically um, for combustion reactions, you're usually gonna have something that looks like this, where you have some C, X, H, Y compounds. So some hydrocarbon, and there may be oxygen in there. So in parentheses, you can put like O with a Z, right? So, so some carbon-based hydrogen compound and it's gonna be reacting with O2 
and you're always going to make CO2 and H2O. Okay, that's your general equation for combustion. So anytime you see any kind of compound with carbon and hydrogen or oxygen or whatever reacting with oxygen, that should be a dead giveaway. That's a combustion reaction, and these are always the products that you make. Okay. All right. So that is it for this section of notes. I know it was a long section, and I know it can be confusing. So please, please, please reach out for help if you need it, especially when you're doing your practice, so that I can help you understand it better. Watch the videos. You know, pause them, rewind them, try to do the problems before they solve them, and uh, and just make sure that you have a good grasp on stuff. All right, guys. That's it for 11.2. I will see you in the next video. Bye.